the companies or assist the generators. You know, whereas for generators, uh, sorry, for the companies, what you could do is you you upskill uh, you upskill your equipment, be more innovative, more productive. You collect more, you recycle more. But then the question is the generators. Who is going to approach the generators? Because at this point in time, the the issue lies with the the collectors. If the generator do not recycle, the responsibility is the generator. We will be fined. Why can't the fine be the generator? How is the government going to reach out to the generators, explain to them, tell them you have to recycle? They will listen to government more than they listen to a collector. That's how I feel. Once we have that arrangement sorted out, the recycling rate somehow it will it will increase. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment if you would allow me about culture. Okay, and the experience around the world that I've seen that there is no problem with culture. People get the idea of recycling like that. As soon as you start, it becomes virtually impossible to go back. I, my wife is Jordanian. I live in Jordan, where we have zero recycling, not one percent, zero. Everything goes into one black bag, and every day I feel sick because I've been used for many, many years to separating plastics and glass and aluminium and organics into various different bags. And I feel, I feel sick every day because there is no recycling. But once you teach a person to recycle, he gets it. Five percent of the population will never get it because they don't want to get it. Okay, there's always five percent against anything. But we, we've seen in cities, does anybody know where Naples is? Okay, Naples is the center of one of the biggest crime organizations in the world, the, the Naples Mafia. 25% so of the population is unemployed. Well, Naples now has one of the highest recycling percentages of, of, of Southern Europe. 40, 50% of waste is recycled in, in Naples. Even in a poor city like that, with very high unemployment, criminal infiltration, people get it like that because it's very, very easy and people want to do it. So it's not a question of culture. You can teach Singaporeans to recycle in five minutes. They're intelligent, they're educated, they want to obey the law. You just have to decide you want to do it. Your point about Nepal is even mafia recycle. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, it recycles a lot of money, that's for sure. Ah, okay, now we come to this part. Now, if really the, the business model is the, the issue, then maybe, Melissa, what do you think about the e waste then? Yeah, precious matter in, in, in handful and computers. Then, if that's the case, then. We shouldn't have any problems in the e waste recycling. How about in, in Europe? <laughs> yeah. I hate the question of e waste <laughs> because everybody looks at the telephones and the televisions and the fridges and the oh, they say, oh God, there's so much precious metals in there. But again, this is another one of those examples where. It costs more to get the precious metals out of the e-waste than the metals of Earth. So it has to be subsidized. Now, we subsidize it in Europe through ex ex uh, extended producer responsibility schemes, where every time you buy something, you deposit a fee. You don't know. It's just included in the product when you buy it. But you deposit a fee with the shopkeeper, who sends the fee back to the manufacturer, who sends the fee to a consortium, who sends the fee to a collector that goes and gets your batteries, your telephones, your televisions, your fridges, your cookers, and takes them to a recycling centre where they are dismantled. But this doesn't come for free. No one makes any money out of it. Financially, it's a complete and total disaster. It's, it's, it's financed by consumers paying a fee to finance it. Tax. Let's call it what it is. It's a tax. It's an environmental tax. Is it the right thing to do? Of course. Of course. But let's not fool ourselves that there is money to be made in this. There's no money to be made in this at all unless the tax pays for it. People say, God, there's gold in that cell phone that you've got there. Sure there is. But it's still cheaper to go and dig it out the ground in Africa or in South America or South Africa than it is to take it out of a cell phone. There's more gold now available in cell phones stocked around the world or in landfills around the world than there are easily available or readily available in the mines. But it's still a lot cheaper to go and dig it up the ground than it is to do that. 
It, and it's expensive to do this stuff. You have to break it up, you have to crush it, you have to separate it, you have to have worker protection, health, everything. Otherwise you get people, like in third world countries, burning this stuff in landfills to separate the copper and the gold out and poisoning themselves with, with, with bugs in pollution. It's very, very expensive to do so. And let's, let's be sure that we understand each other, otherwise we're fooling each other. This is the right thing to do. Recycle your telephone. This one day will be recycled. It's the right thing to do, but God damn is expensive, so we have to pay for it. I like the idea. That's why Singapore no e-waste recycling companies. Do we have? Yeah. A lot or not? No, not a lot, but just a few. No, I, I hope that the, you know, we have uh, government people, the, the NA people down there, and then listening to the industry leaders talking about this. I hope later we can, not just a dialogue, we can raise all this issue, maybe have a debate about you know, whether this is the way to go. And But on that aspect, I need to, I think I agree with what uh, uh, David has, has mentioned, because I visited one of the PCB plant in Japan. The PCB, not the printer circuit board, the one they use in transformer, those chemicals, you know, very toxic chemicals. And the plant cost them, I think, a few hundred million dollars. And since then, the, the plant will last for because now people don't use PCB anymore, right? But there are still those re re uh, re remembrance that they need to get rid of. And they set up a plan, how many so much money just to do that? I, I was quite surprised that you know, in Japan they, they did that, they, the government thing that is the right thing to do to protect their country, to protect their people. They set up a plan, found the money, and that's it. So this is something for us to think about. But seriously, if all, when we talk about sustainability, development, sustainability, waste management, we always have to balance between economic growth, between the cost, benefit analysis and, and whatnot. These are the issues that we, in this context, we won't be able to reach the solutions very easily, but it's something that we always have to think about. Now, the, another question I want to ask David is very, very much my personal interest on technology. I think we have also uh, colleagues uh, from the technology office. Now, we understand EU go all the way to uh, so-called waste prevention, right? The, the waste to energy seems like may not be the kind of top priority you have just mentioned that in Germany. But yet, in this region of the world, the advanced country like Japan, uh, although we also hear the kind of concept of a circular economy concept in Japan, but at the same time, we notice they pump in a lot of effort, also money in building up the technology, even higher tech, in the uh, waste burning technology. Now people talk about gasification plant, and we have seen gasification plant by the Japanese company. And sometimes now even in the local the university is also thinking about you know, trying to put in a, a plant in a university, thinking that this is maybe a solution. So David, what is your view on, you know, yet Japan will want to put in so much effort to, to this kind of technology and to sell it to the world. And uh, how do you compare the different technologies in the waste management uh, hierarchy? <laughs> Time to leave the room again. <laughs> well, I think we have to start trying to analyze that a, little, a little bit what our waste stream is. And that changes very, very much from country to country. And in some countries, for example, in Europe, we're talking about organics. In other words, wet food waste, garden waste being between 30 and 40 percent of our waste stream. Now, it doesn't make sense to burn water. The organics are 70 percent water. Okay, so it makes sense to treat those either taking the energy from them with anaerobic digestion or treat them through composting so that the soil to soil circular loop is is regained. Soil is one renewable one non renewable resource, topsoil, the last ten centimeters of soil, which we are depleting at a very, very rapid rate around the world. And if any of you have ever seen when I I stimulate you to go and see the documentary called Dirt, D I R T which talks about the challenge of topsoil in the global economy, in 
food resources and also in water management. 